Well, sounds like I love I love the idea of diversification of risk, and uh, because that's that's what a lot of people who aren't in real estate are afraid of is that real estate is risky, but it's mm-hmm. you know, risk and is you know. It, I said diversification is, uh, you know, the, your protection against a single point of failure. So when you've got one house, one builder, one a buyer, one seller, one there's there's a whole lot of single points of failure, and that's what what people are afraid of. So the fund sounds like a fantastic idea to help allay some of those fears, diversify the risk across the multiple projects, then. Uh, it also uh, it offers more more freedom if you know somebody wants to exit uh, versus waiting for a you know a, a single property to kind of finish you know a, a complete turn. So uh, <laughs> you you talked about as this growth and you know using partnerships to to you know. Uh, maximize uh, the growth, but you've you've actually we've, we've talked in the past and how uh, unmitigated growth. You kind of went a little too fast in the past and had to scale. You scale back a little bit. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So this was in 2022 when I first joined the Seven Figure Flipping Mastermind and I quit my job of 14 years to to do that full time. Um. I kind of, I, I was probably too aggressive with how fast I wanted to move. I wanted to, f- to build a fit, a seven figure business in my first year. And I mean, I had the template with, with seven figures. Like I knew what it needed to look like and I knew how much money I would need to spend on marketing and what the team would need to look like and all that. But theory and practice are two different things. And building a business is not just like, oh, let me hire a bunch of people and throw some money at marketing and everything will be great. It just doesn't work that way. So um, now what did happen was I, I did start getting some success. I was in a very competitive market. So it took a while till I got my first deal and, 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 and by the way, learned a bunch of skill sets that I never had, like, you know, lead management, lead generation, and then sales, like sales is a, a huge kind of, uh, well, we'll call it not my strength, but I, I learned that skill. And so it took, a, it took about five months till I closed my first deal. Um, and then I closed the second one a couple of weeks later or three weeks later. And then I started to build up momentum. And at that point I was like, great, this is, this is working. Um, I got some money back in, you know, uh, in the bank refilling the coffers. I can put more money into, or at least to sustain the level of marketing I'm doing. Let me hire an acquisition manager. Let me, um, oh, I, I interviewed acquisition managers. I like two of them. So let me hire both just insane. I hired one for acquisitions and the other for dispositions. Um, cause like, Oh, these are two great people. Let me, let me get them in. Uh, let me increase my cold calling spend. Let me hire two more cold callers and a lead manager. Um, and I already had an admin. So I found myself with a team of like six plus me. So seven, which is, you know, you can arguably run a seven figure or multi seven figure business on that type of staff. And I had only, I was only on pace to do maybe 10, 12 deals. For me at the time, I was like, okay, th- this is okay. It's sustainable and it's going to give me a point to, from which I'm, I'll be able to grow and scale with, that, with this team. So like, fine, let's go. But then the market shifted, right? Interest rates started creeping up. Um, I was wholesaling. My buyer pool dried up. Um, a bunch of properties that I had under contract that were deals at the time when, when the buyers started dr- drying up and, and um, they wanted much deeper discounts, they were no longer deals. I had to cancel a bunch of contracts. I had to you know, go back on my word on, on a few sellers that I told them I'd be able to sell their property. So that wasn't fun. And I had to let go of staff. Um, so that was me being hyper aggressive with how fast I wanted to move. And at each like each of the components I had built out, the the lead generation, lead management, acquisitions, dispositions, weren't really in a very good place before kind of moving on. I was like, okay, let's just go. Let's hire everybody and and we'll figure it out instead of being more methodical about, okay, I've now checked this box 
this this role is in a in a really good place. They're operating. I'm still going to monitor them and keep track of their KPIs and coach them and help to build them up. But now, okay, now I can focus on the next thing. Okay, let me build up Dispo. Let me and so on and so forth. I didn't do that. I was like, let's just go, and it, it all came kind of crashing down. Now, if the market hadn't shifted, who knows what would have happened? I think I probably I was still way you know ahead of skis and and would have had to pull back anyway. But in, in a way, it was almost good that it it crashed down the way it did because, I mean, I always think about this like my failures I've, I've learned the most from. And so I learned, okay, I'm not going to do that again. And what was it specifically that I did wrong? And how would I do it differently the second time? Um, and it's not to say that what I've learned and the approaches I would take now are perfect or would even necessarily work, but I've certainly eliminated a bunch of things that I know I should never do again. 